Moin! This rook is printed in PVB. PVB can also be electroplated. And PVB can then be dissolved in isopropanol. And then you could melt metal and pour it in? You can, right? Let's find out. You're probably wondering what it's all about. It's about making 3D prints heavy. These typically consist of plastic and therefore are very lightweight. This can be achieved with casting. It's done by printing in a special material such as casting filament or wax resin, which is destroyed during the process. However, this requires skills, skills I don't have. That's why I thought, hey, why not electroform such a material and then cast into this shell? I needed a material that I could hang in my electrolyte without being water soluble, like PVA. I had some rolls of PVB lying around, which can be smoothed with isopropanol and dissolved in the long term. So I put it in the printer and started the first test print. This material prints quite well, but is somewhat brittle. But it is PVB and can be welded together well with isopropanol. If you have a machine for this, feel free to use it. It's always great to load it up and start it up. Such a nice light show, but don't overdo it. Looks pretty good. I'm going to electroform them now, which means coating them with conductive paint and coppering them. Let's see if a vapor smooth surface can be helpful. To make something conductive, you need an airbrush plus compressor, conductive paint and of course PPE, your personal protective equipment. Always keep in mind that your health is at stake. Do not take it lightly and protect yourself. The diluted paint can then be sprayed in multiple thin layers. Have I told you how extremely well 10% citric acid works to pickle degrees conductive objects such as these two anodes here? Um, anyway, here comes the bright copper electrolyte. On the left and right I secure the anodes in their anode pockets. Both are connected to the positive terminal of the power supply. In the middle the conductive rook and it is connected to the negative per terminal. I have worked with constant voltage in the past but that is not so good. Calculate the surface of your object in square decimeters, multiply it by factor 1.2 and set the current in constant current mode. After about 30 minutes you can then increase it to factor 1.5. Let the electrolyte deposit for about 3 to 4 hours. A very nice result. Quickly rinse it and then we will dissolve the PVB in a glass filled with 99% isopropanol, leaving only the 200 micrometer thick shell. This process takes 24 to 36 hours depending on the thickness of the print. Afterwards you will only hold the delicate shell in your hands. With 2.3 grams it weighs almost as much as the entire PVB print. And now we can already cast the shell with metal. I use a small casting pan and tin bars for this. The melting point of tin is quite low, but the price is quite high. I suspect it will also work professionally with other metals. So first we made a small test cast. Hooray! Test successful? No, pour the tin into the rook. It can take quite a lot, so I have to pour more again and again. You can see very well how the color changes through oxidation. The rook is also very hot for a long time. You can see the three stages side by side. I now show you what happens if there is still some residual water or residual PVB in the copper shell while casting. As you can see, you should always be well protected during these processes. Do not underestimate this. We have protection. The finished object weighs 54.5 grams in the end. That is an amazing increase in weight of 2100%. Okay, now that we have gained confidence in the process, 
Let's do something really nice. A fantastic Darth Vader bust from Photosmith. So, conclusion time. Should we follow this up? I was primarily interested in two things. One, to show that the electroform shell can be easily detached from the carrier and secondly, that it can then be casted. Personally, I think that the PVB can only be completely dissolved with some effort. You need a lot of isopropanol and have to wait and steer more often for the PVB to dissolve completely. Probably a resin wax, which you could then burn works well too. The casting worked surprisingly well, but the pure tin is very expensive and I couldn't test other metals because I don't own a melting furnace. The effect is great though. The large increase in weight makes the former print very, very attractive. It is indeed a spectacular comparison to hold the two rooks in both hands. It's also great for decorative items. The Vader bust could now be nickel plated. But that's another story. I hope you had fun. Next time there'll be more elaborate props again. And until then, tschüss.